Unit two, ledger lines. Ledger lines give us a chance to notate on the score the high extremes and the low extremes of the keyboard. Now notice that we don't have to use ledger lines all the way up here. Remember the Atava, A to VA, says so play an octave higher. That's gonna be very well utilized and often utilized to show these extreme ranges. So really the ledger lines that you wanna memorize is about up to two ledger lines higher, which is the high C here, two ledger lines below the bass step, gives us our low C. Those are wonderful set of notes. There's a symmetry, two ledger lines down, two ledger lines up, and they're both C's. When you have stacks of higher ledger lines, even the professionals don't memorize those. We just think, okay, line to line to line. In other words, you count up by your skips, moving up those ledger lines and see where it places you. So here we're gonna take this opportunity of playing in these larger ranges to drop in with our arm weight. We wanna have a big tone, so big low C and the high C. on that step one, step four, and step five. Notice also these octaves, we don't have to always stretch because that takes too much finger. So you can kind of flow to it and close the hand. Bringing in the arm weight gives you a much bigger tone than just using a finger muscle. Let's now look at Niagara Falls because we want to cover the gamut across the keyboard. So if we learned that one chord, right, or building our chord on scale step one, we can arpeggiate that. That was we can take it in a harp-like fashion up and down the keys. So the exercise for you to work on is play left hand to right hand, left hand to right hand. We like to call that a cross-hand arpeggio. In uh, book one, we learned that step one was important. We built the chord on it for the one chord. That's our C chord here. But also remember step five is so important. So important we gave it a name. That's the dominant note. It's a commanding note. Step five, but we build a chord on that. Gives us this G chord. And then back to our one chord, right? One chord built on scale step one. So this whole piece is going to have just two chords, C and G. We can label that C chord the one chord, because it's built on step one of our C scale. And then the G chord is step is a chord five, built on step five of the scale. One chord, five chord. But we're going to arpeggiate them. We're going to roll them harp-like across the keys. <laughs> other or even stacked directly on top of each other but as we saw here we have that C chord pulling out that third of the chord the middle tone and brought up an octave so it's a rearrangement of these tones any which way we want to play root and third and fifth is an appropriate voicing or arrangement of those chord tones and notice how wonderful it Beautiful that sounds really. So play around C, E, G tones in different arrangements, different voicings. 